So while our wings are drying, we're gonna go ahead and sculpt out some of our uh, insect bodies. Now something to keep in mind, just as sort of a general rule, is that the length of a dragonfly's body, as well as a damselfly body, is about the equivalent of the wingspan. So if your wings are about this long, that's about how long your body should be. It's a little bit shorter, but keep that in mind. It's just kind of a general rule to get your proportions right. Now all we're really gonna be using our white for um, in this case is for the eyes. Now if I were going to be doing a lighter colored damselfly or dragonfly such as a yellow or a, um, or a pink or a, even like a soft orange, I would sculpt the entire body out of the white and then go ahead and use my dust to give it color. But because we're going to be going with some darker colored, the, the deep blues and the greens, we're going to go ahead and sculpt our bodies out of the black. And this is far more than we're going to need. Now what you need to keep in mind is that a dragonfly's body, we're going to go ahead and sculpt one of those first, is, is essentially three parts. There's a head, a thorax, and then the body part itself. Now the head, um, the head is almost f like a flat oval. So you just want to take a small ball and kind of flatten it out between your fingers. like that. And that's going to form the first portion. That's going to be our head. And you notice how it is, uh, it's flat on the one side and it's a little more rounded on the other. And that is going to be our, uh, our head. Our thorax comes next and it's, it's a longer sort of round shape, almost like a almost like a column but a little rounded at the edges and basically all you're going to do is you're going to stick those two together like this and go ahead and pinch it down a little bit at the back so this is the general shape we have now firming up and you notice it gets like this and it's no longer easy to brush on. So what I will do is I will just put this right into the water bath um, on the stove and that will um, melt our gelatin back down without having to reheat it in the microwave or anything like that. It's just a much, um, I think it's a much easier way to just keep your gelatin at a nice consistent uh, heat when you're, when you're making several, several different insects. So let's get started.